Good morning and welcome to the West African Resources Investor Webinar and Conference Call. All attendees are in a listen-only mode. If you would like to ask a question directly to the company, please use the raise hand function within Zoom. For those phoning in, please dial star nine. Alternatively, you can enter it into the Q&A panel within Zoom. I'll now hand over to West African Resources Executive Chairman and CEO, Richard Hyde. Thank you, Richard. Thanks, Nathan. Um, and thanks to all the uh, investors dialing into the call. Uh, we've got the, uh, we've got a team here. We've got uh, Padre Gadon here, our CFO. Uh, we've got uh, Todd Giltay, our Gen General Manager of Finance, and also Nick Hartch, who is um, CEO of Arimco, who's uh, advising on our uh, debt funding process for Kiaka. So just um, off, the, off the top, uh, it was a quarter of production up and costs down, which is really positive, uh, and also significant quarter for growth with um, our resource and reserve update and our 10-year mining plan uh, published. So unhedged resources now standing at 12.6 million ounces and unhedged reserves at 6.4 million ounces. Uh, for the quarter, we, we didn't have any uh, significant social or health or safety incidents. Uh, our TRIFA is now standing at 1.67 compared to the West Australian gold average of 7.1, which is very positive. Gold produced in the quarter was 56,307 ounces, um, which is up 13% on the December quarter. Uh, our costs were down 10% at uh, 1,172 dollars per ounce on sustaining costs. Um, and again, I've, I've always note that you know, we're reporting our all in sustaining costs uh, according to the World Gold Council guidelines. Uh, unhedged gold sales were 48,208 ounces uh, and unhedged sales at $1,878 an ounce. Uh, so that, was, that generated $29 million of operating cash flow um, after our final instalment of $25 million to the Burkina Faso government for, from our profit in, in 2021. So the underground mining plan, uh, moving on to that, <clears throat> tracked very well. <clears throat> so ounces were uh, up 13% on the last quarter, uh, mostly due to higher grade. Um, so the underground grade average nearly eight grams per tonne. Uh, open pit mining continued really well. Um, significant, significantly ounces are uh, up uh, over the previous quarter. Um, now that we've we've finished that um, pit cut back at the southern end of M5, um, so we'll see that strip ratio trend lower over this year and, and over um, the next few years. Our processing continued its strong uh, performance. It's been very solid at nearly 760,000 tonnes milled at an average head grade of 2.5 grams per tonne and uh, nearly 94% recovery, which is an outstanding effort. So on growth, uh, during the quarter, we released our resource and reserve update uh, and our 10-year mining plan. And that's something that we want to keep doing, um, which demonstrates that we're a sustainable business with, uh, with long-term prospects. Um, our resources increased by a million ounces to 12.6 million ounces of gold, and that's net of, of mining in 2022. Uh, and our ore reserves increased uh, 4.7 million ounces to 6.4 million ounces of gold net of net of mining in 2022 as well. And that's with the addition of, um, of Kiaka coming in. And also uh, we converted uh, two panels of, of underground material at M1 South, um, which We'll continue, we'll continue getting ahead of production in M1 South um, throughout this year and next year as well. Um, currently, M1 South's got a, a mine life that takes us out to 2037 um, and well past the 10-year the mining plan. Uh, the 10-year the mine plan incorporated uh, Kiaka as well, which has got a mine life out to 2042. Um, and moving on to Kiaka, uh, the project's been... Uh, the project summary has been reiterated in, in the, this morning's quarterly report, um, but years one to five, we're expecting 233,000 ounces per annum production uh, and about 220,000 ounces production 
per annum over the life of the project, which is about 18 years, which takes it out to 2042. So, you know, both operating centres have got relatively low cost and long life um, mines. Uh, during the quarter, we also made good progress on construction at Kiaka. Um, so earthworks for the main camp and front gate were completed. Uh, we focused, focused on um, completing our areas relating to security and fencing. Uh, also upgrading the exploration camp um, and starting on the, on the permanent or the main camp uh, for the project as well, which we expect to have well advanced throughout this quarter. We've also uh, secured some long lead items uh, during, during the quarter and it's pleasing to note that we're not seeing any escalation in costs. So over 20% of the, the projects now committed and fixed. Um, and you know, we believe the capital estimate from August 2022 is still, is still accurate. And major commitments include EPCM services, um, sag and bore mills, uh, primary crusher, apron feeders, thickener. So we, we're actually getting down the track on some of these major components and, and we're not seeing any escalation, which is very positive. And finally, um, just on Kiaka funding, uh, we're quite well advanced on that. Uh, we're expecting to um, appoint a syndicate of lenders uh, later this quarter. Um, and given the gold price at the moment uh, of around $2,000 an ounce, we're expecting to fully fund the construction of Kiaka with uh, somewhere between 250 and 300 million US dollars in debt and, and cash flow from, uh, from San Brado and also you know, utilising our cash at bank. Um, and that would see us finishing construction in the middle of 2025 and from then on uh, being a solid plus 400,000 ounce producer. It costs around about US $1,000 an ounce which is you know, lowest quartile for the industry at the moment. All right, well, that's a quick summary of, of the quarter. Um, Nathan, I'll, I'll hand it back for questions. Thank you. If you'd like to ask a question directly to Richard, please use the raise hand function within Zoom. For those phoning in, dial star nine. Alternatively, you can enter it into the Q&A panel within Zoom. Uh, your first question comes from Roger Fitzpatrick at Charlton Asset Management. He's just asked uh, if you could give some more colour around the uh, the build costs at Kiaka and I guess why this isn't, why in the current inflationary environment you, you're not seeing an effect so far. All right, thanks, Nathan. Thanks, Roger. Uh, well, I think, um, you know, the major reason is that uh, I, I think we saw iron steel prices peak last year. Uh, we've seen oil prices peak last year, which kind of relates to a lot of the, um, the piping products and HDPE that we need for the project. Uh, and also from a labour perspective, West Africa hasn't seen the same cost pressures as um, more developed jurisdictions like Western Australia uh, and North America, US and Canada. So uh, I think that's one of the reasons, but also, uh, you know, West Africa is a, historically a good place to build uh, gold projects, very, very simple terrain, in, in, particularly in Burkina Faso. Um, it's quite flat. Uh, and we don't have any of the uncertainties around earthworks that some of the, um, the North American projects seem to have had recently. Uh, and I think if you look more broadly, uh, over you know, recent years, um, and particularly projects that you know, we, we've built uh, previously with Lycopodium and Lycopodium's built with their other clients. Uh, they, be, they built them on, on time on budget or, or generally um, slightly ahead of schedule and under budget. Hope that answers the question. Thank you. Your next question comes from Mark Hinsley as, uh, at Cranport. Um, he's asked if, if you can secure 250 million to 350 million US in debt, then is that enough um, combined with the cash flow to avoid any capital raise for Kiaka? And secondly, would you need to hedge for the um, to get the debt financing? 
Uh, yeah, so look, if the gold price stays around the current the current spot price, uh, yes, yeah, so that you know two hundred thousand, two hundred fifty thousand uh, million dollars in in funding would see us fully funded. Um, and look, maybe Padre, do you want to talk a bit about hedging? Um, and really, you know, we don't. We we do believe the gold price is is going higher over over the, you know, higher for longer, um, which is why we're more focused on, you know, keeping our ore reserve cal uh, prices at, at US fourteen hundred dollars an ounce so that we, you know, we maintain margin. But um, it, it is a discussion that we have quite a bit here. Discretionary, yeah. So yeah. under under our negotiations, hedging will be discretionary. Yeah, for for the um for the loan um. Negotiations hedging will be, <clears throat> excuse me, discretionary, not mandatory. So whether we hedge will be decided at a later point. Okay. Well, thanks, Thank Matt. you. Thank you. And we've had a series of questions um, asking for comment about the security situation yeah. in Burkina Faso. Just wonder if you could give an update on that, please. Certainly. Uh, so we, we continue to see, you know, unrest in the north and the east of the country. However, uh, more recently, it's been um, a result of, I guess, the government's military action. I think if we go back to the start of last quarter, there were a lot of questions around uh, the French leaving and whether uh, Russia's Wagner Group were going to come into, into country. Um, you know, we kind of advised after meeting government officials at Indaba in, in early February that, you know, we didn't think that was the case. And um, thankfully, we're now, you know, well into April and, you know, we haven't seen the Russian uh, mercenary group come into country. Uh, the the French mo uh, demobilised from, from uh, Ouagadougou in February as well, which um, we, it went reasonably smoothly. I think since then, uh, we've seen the military in Burkina adopt some of the tactics that terrorists have been using in the north and east of the country. So um, they're much more mobile now. They're, they're using um, you know, motorcycles and, and technology to uh, to, to track uh, terrorists in, in the north and the east of the country. Um, they've also acquired new equipment. So they've recently bought um, Turkish drones, the TB2s, that have been very successful in um, in the Ukraine. And you know, over the last two months, they've, they've had significant success in in tracking down terrorists and um, uh, and cancelling them, I suppose. And we hope that continues. Um, you know, if you have a look at you know across the Sahel in Mali, Niger, and, and Burkina Faso, you know, there's more than a thousand schools that are closed at the moment. You know, it's it's a situation that doesn't get a lot of um, a lot of press. Um, and, you know, mostly the Burkina government and Mali government uh, have had to take this uh, this fight on themselves with very little international assistance. So um, it's pleasing to see that, you know, the, the Burkina government since the, the second coup or the, the change in leadership in September last year really have got on the front foot. Uh, they've made really good progress. So, you know, we're quite positive on, um, on the situation at the moment and we hope it kind of keeps moving in the right direction. Thanks, Richard. There's no further questions at this time, so I'll now hand back to you for closing remarks. All right, thanks, Nathan. Uh, look, just um, looking forward to the next quarter. Um, you know, we want investors to to uh, you know, keep an eye out for for the company announcing the syndicate to provide um, US two hundred fifty to three hundred million in debt uh, financing for Kiaka. Um, that would see us. Um, you know, fully funded at the current gold price and not requiring an equity raise uh, to fund Kiaka. Uh, also, we are drilling at M5 South. Uh, we are infilling beneath the, the base of um, the life of mine open pit and expecting, you know, with further good results there that we could um, sink a decline off the bottom of the M5 open pit and, and open up our second underground mine for the project. So that, that um, drilling and scoping study work is underway at the moment. Uh, and with that, um, thanks everyone for, for dialing in. Uh, we look forward to updating you again next quarter.